um, expertise, support, and advice on gender equality issues. Uh, the public um, campaigns of our countries seek to combat violence against women and girls, offering them a way to report domestic abuse and thus contribute to a sharp increase in reports of violence. The campaigns are also very timely initiatives since the pandemic has created new risks for women and girls in respect of exposure to violence. Uh, indeed, uh, we now all talk about a shadow pandemic. Uh, in commemoration of the International Day of the Elimination of Violence Against Women on November 25th, 2021, um, the Greek Minister of Labor and Social Affairs uh, and the General Secretariat of Demography, Family Policy and Gender Equality launched an information and awareness campaign, words as sharp as knives on social media. The messaging uh, in the campaign focuses on words women hear from their partners, family, or friends, which keep them trapped in toxic, abusive environments. The Greek authorities encourage women to listen uh, to the actions, not the words of their abusers, especially due to the fact that some words can escalate to knife stabs. To seek support, women are encouraged to contact the Greek National Network of uh, Structures for preventing and combating violence against women, utilizing the SOS uh, hot helpline and the 43 counseling centers all over the country. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce Ms. Christina Agoritza, legal expert of the Cabinet of the Deputy Minister of Labor and Social Affairs, responsible uh, for uh, demography, family, and gender equality, who participated, uh, Mrs. Um, Maria Siriagela, who participated uh, last week in SCSW. Uh, Ms. Christina Goica holds an MBA degree and is a graduate of the Greek National School of Public Administration. As a policy officer of the General uh, Secretariat for uh, Demography, Family uh, Policy and Gender Equality since 2008, she has been involved in initiatives and projects uh, on gender mainstreaming in public policies on female labor, on women in leadership, and on gender-based violence. As appointed member of the Council of Europe's Gender Equality Commission and of the European Institute for Gender Equality Experts Forum, she is in close collaboration with other member states' representatives, exchanging good practices and sharing experience, support, and advice on gender equality issues. Thank you. Can, can I just uh, very quickly, before moving on, acknowledge here uh, the presence of Ambassador Maria Nazaré Farani Azevedo, Consul General of Brazil in uh, New York, who is helping to disseminate the Basta Red Sign campaign uh, program here uh, in New York uh, to protect uh, Brazilian women here. So we're grateful for her presence. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Uh, I would, uh, before uh, giving the floor to, to Madam uh, Renata Gil for the, the Brazilian campaign, there's a, a short video that we'll, we'll present on the Brazilian campaign. Uh, please, can you, can we, can we see the video, uh, the Brazilian, the first video of the Brazilian campaign? A violência doméstica não parou na pandemia. Eu tinha postado a foto com o X vermelho na minha rede social. Não foi a primeira vez que ele me bateu. Os policiais pararam o caminhão na estrada e eu já desci agradecendo por terem me libertado daquela situação. Essa história não é a minha, mas poderia ser. Eu fui até a farmácia com o um X vermelho na mão para pedir ajuda para minha filha de 14 anos que estava apanhando em casa. 
história não é minha. Mas poderia ser. Vizinhos que chamaram a polícia. Ele já estava me batendo há mais de uma hora. Quando ele abriu a porta, eu fiz um X vermelho na mão, com meu próprio sangue. Essa história não é minha, mas poderia ser. A campanha Sinal Vermelho salvou a vida delas e de outras brasileiras. Mas também ajudou a abrir os olhos de muitas que não sabiam que sofriam. Passei por isso no ano passado e só estou sabendo agora que é crime. Na verdade, eu não queria acreditar que eu estava sofrendo um abuso e eu só me sentia culpada. Eu já fui vítima, mas hoje eu sei o meu valor. É muito importante e essencial para as mulheres o alerta e, principalmente, o apoio. Eu sofri vários tipos de violência, até a violência física chegar, antecedeu muitas outras. Mas quando eu sofri essa violência, ela foi tão grave, me feriu tanto por dentro e por fora, que eu achei que realmente não fosse o próximo, próximo passo seria o feminicídio. Bom, essa história é minha. Um X vermelho salva vidas. A informação também. Apoie outras mulheres a saírem de um relacionamento abusivo. Hey, thank you. Now we'll pass this, I'll give the floor to... Thank you very much, Luiz Guilherme. Uh, dear Ambassador Costa Filho, our host today and the enthusiast of the work of be presented to you all, thank you for your support and your words. To members of the Ambassador's team at the Brazilian Mission who have been extremely supportive all along. Ambassador Maria Teofili, our co-host and team at Greece Mission, Ambassador Maria Nazaré, Miss Cristina Agoritza, who joined us from Greece. Uh, before I start, a brief clarification on the video we have just watched. The first three women to appear were actresses who were given voice to victims in real life. The fourth and the last one, however, is a Brazilian celebrity, Luisa Brunier a successful Brazilian businesswoman and former top model who herself was a victim of violence and abuse perpetrated by an ex-partner who is a millionaire. That her own story of abuse, she was brave enough to come forward and encourage others to the same. A story she got away from, which shows that this, problems, this problem is widespread in society unfortunately, regardless of the social and economic status of victims and abusers. Brunet has become an outspoken activist and one of the leading voices at faces and faces of the campaign. As we move to campaigns and Brazilian best practice, I feel honored to be here talking about Brazilian civil society's actions and especially Association of Brazilian Magistrates, AMB actions to improve the safety and well-being of women and girls who are targeted by domestic violence. For over, for over two years now, AMB has been focusing on advocacy initiatives related to women's rights and has been able to work together with the three branches, executive, legislative and judicial, in bringing about a change for women and girls. For women and girls, equality is not a basic human right. It's the right to live from violence and discrimination, to enjoy the highest standard of human development, development, and as well, the rights to physical and mental health, to be educated, to own property, to vote and be voted for public office, and to earn equal wages. Yet, inequalities remain deeply entrenched entrenched in, in every society. Across the globe, many women and girls still face discrimination based on gender and are threatened by domestic violence, among the many problems that disproportionately affect women and girls. Uh, in Brazil, recent international and national studies have brought society's attention to the vulnerabil vulnerability of women and to how structural sexism has trivialized domestic violence in the country. Even in comparison, in comparison with another nations that also disrespect the female population, Brazil is at the top of the ranking 
as one of the most dangerous countries in the world of women, for women. Brazil ranks fifth in the world in violent deaths of women, according to data from the United Nations Higher Commissioner for Human Rights. In Brazil, women are killed 48 times more than in the, in the United Kingdom, 24 times more than Denmark, and 16 times more than in Japan or Scotland. Statistics, statistics on this tragic context gathered in 2020 in Brazil have enabled to put together a victim profile. According to the 15th Brazilian Yearbook of Public Security, 1,350 cases of feminicide were rep reported in Brazil, among which 74% of the victims aged between 18 and 14, 44 years old. 61% of women were black. 81% were killed by their partners or ex-partners. Given this challenging and, challenging and sad context, AMB has become a leading force in defending women and girls against violence since the pandemic stuck as all in 2020. The association has launched in Brazil a new concept aimed at talking, tackling domestic violence through the creation of implementation of the Red Sino campaign, the approval of PASTA, legislative package in record time in Brazilian Congress, and the current efforts in favor of the implementation of the national strategy to combat violence against women. The Red Sino campaign. The Red Sino campaign is a simple and very powerful tool against domestic violence that makes it easier for women to report her case. It requires no translation or paperwork. With a red cross in the palm of her hand, a woman, a woman can silently ask for help from a network for, of over 15,000 business nationwide, as Banco do Brasil that is here with us today. How does the Red Simo came to light? The campaign came to light on June 10th, 2020, 2020, in the face of alarming increase in cases of domestic violence in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. At the time, the federal government's channels regist registered uh, 105,000 reports of violence against women. This corresponds to approximately 12 reports per hour, among which 70% involve domestic and family violence, including action or omission that may lead to death, injury, physical suffering, sexual or psychological abuse. It's worth adding that bullying and property damage are also listed. The social distance period resulting from, from the COVID-19 pandemic increased the level of the complexity in combating abuse and violence against women. The victim and abuser share in the same place 24 hours a day and seven days a week, and the restriction of a sex access to offshore protection networks were some of the perverse combination that held women as hostess to physical, physical, sexual, and psychological torture. According to Brazil Public Security Foreign Study, homes remains, remain as the space of greatest risk for women, and 48% of victims reported that most serious episodes of violence experienced in, in 2020 happened indoors, in their houses, a figure that has been increasing. Streets appeared in 99% of reports and workplaces referred as to the third environment in violence case, with 9% according to the third edition of the study. States and supports of our red sign -on. The campaign divides in devised and implemented in partnership with the National Justice Council, 
has been adopted in 18 states and the federal district as a law and over five, five, 15,000 business have joined it, starting with drugstores and bank branches nationwide. Brazilian public institutions has joined it in as well. Multiplan, a shopping main mall chain, and Jacques Janini, a beauty parlor chain, have also been received to assisting women in a situation of violence. Both have signed the agreement to join the campaign to promote the red sign. All partners are offered assistance to train their personal on the protocols to protect women to the moment they call for help. Media supports and events. Additionally, the program has also had the backing of national celebrities and influencers through both traditional media and social media. That earned the campaign a huge amount of free publicity, essential to raising social awareness at every level in our society. Luisa Brunet, who I have mentioned here, is among them. Furthermore, an event that raised the campaign's public profile took place last year on Brazilian Magistrates Day, August 5th, 11th, when a Red Cross was projected on the hands of the Statue of Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro. The event highlighted to Brazilian citizens that a new era in the fight against domestic violence has come about. Uh, some cases and results of the campaign. A photo posted on social media with an X on the palm of a victim's hand, hand saved the life of a 30-year-old woman who was being held in unlawful imprisonment and was systematically beaten by her husband for months in, a, in his own truck in São José do Rio Preto, São Paulo, state of Brazil. Also, a photo with the X on the palm of the hand enabled a young woman to be rescued from routine rapes in Aporé, Goiás, the middle of Brazil. In another state, a woman managed to report it at a pharmacy with a red X on her hand while the abuser waited for her and her daughter in the car parked outside. It happened in Santa Catarina. Likewise, after being threatened with a death by her partner, partner, a woman silent called from help for help at a pharmacy using the red X sign on the palm of her hand during the night in Toledo, Minas Gerais. Under reporting, is clear uh, an issue to be overcome in dealing with domestic violence and rising initial, fi initial figures related to cases in 2020 and 2021 indicate that public awareness is leading to social change. Many women are no longer ashamed of being victim, victims and calling for help. I'll give a couple of very recent figures involving the federal district where, we, where our capital city, Brasilia, is located. The first one is that reports of, uh, of violence against women and girls lead the statistics of cases reported to police hotline. The same trend has been taking place in Rio de Janeiro in recent months. As an initial result of campaigns to raise awareness and to tackle violence against women, official statistics gathered by the government of the district of federal district indicate a decline in cases when you compare pre-pandemic figures to current ones. While 16,000 cases were reported in 2019, the figure has dropped to 11,000 last year. It is an encouraging sign, but it's too early to tell and to, to tell and the figures are still alarming. It's important to note that we clearly have to work in, on the issue of underreporting and on the equality of official statistics on a permanent, permanent basis 
in order to assess the improvements and the challenges ahead. The, legisl the, le the legislative package called BASTA, along with, with the Red Sino campaign and the primary focus on public communication strategies, a second axis of the initiative led by AMB had to deal with the Congress through the liberations and unanimous approval of a legislative package compromised in law, 14,188. The package was approved in record time, four months only, and sanctioned by the President Bolsonaro on July 28, 2021. It includes a series of changes to the criminal code and the the Rydell's Crimes Act, and also the pioneer Maria da Penha law against domestic violence in order to make the sentence of crimes against women more severe. It is important to note that Maria da Penha law in place since 2006 is a historic milestone in tackling violence and abuse against women in, in girls in Brazil and has saved many lives. As an example of change and updates brought about the new package, it has codified for the first time the concept of psychological violence as a criminal offense. Uh, the, the points that we have in the, the pacote basta that is called enough, the psychological violence as a crime, a national cooperation for Red Sino campaign, sentence increase, removal from home as a security measure, and stalking codified as a crime. Now we are working on the strategy to combat violence against women, a, natural, a national strategy. I'm convinced about the lack of the, a national approach to tackle the issue of violence against women. Given this fact, we can conclude that enhanced institutional dialogue and effective policy operational integration within the Brazilian Federation are still missing in our policy against violence targeting women. In, in a country such as Brazil, a federation which is a continental, continental in size and that gathers 27 federated states and public security units are at those levels, in addition, in addition to 27 military police units with different protocols, it's essential to devise and implement a national strategy coordinated by the federal government and its Ministry of Justice and Public Security. According to AMB proposals for a national strategy to combat violence against women, the structure would consist of a council composed of representatives of Ministry of Justice, which could coordinate, coordinate the initiative and the Ministry of Women, Family and Human Rights, among other government officials and institutions with renowned uh, expertise in combating violence against women. And why we are here today? Because of the Red Sino, because the Red Sino campaign is already a good practice that been tested in real life and proven successful. A good practice that gets most of our traditional and social media with very low costs and highly effective messaging delivered through everyone's smartphones. And therefore, a strategy that can be easily adapted to the other development countries through international dialogue and cooperation. Uh, I, I would just uh, ask to uh, pass another video that is the last one. And so we are coming to our final exposition. If it works. <laughs> Yeah. It's not working because we have some problems. Okay. Well, thank you very much. No, no, no. 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 Um, In conclusion, Thanks just so very me. quickly, we still have a lot of work ahead of us. So there you go. Have the, have the video. Okay. 
A violência doméstica não escolhe classe social, cor nem endereço. No exterior, muitas brasileiras sofrem em relacionamentos abusivos e se sentem isoladas, sem ter a quem recorrer para pedir ajuda. Nós queremos que a campanha Sinal Vermelho chegue cada vez mais longe e contamos com a sua solidariedade. O código já é lei em todo o Brasil e as expatriadas contam com a mesma proteção fora do país. Se receber um pedido de socorro com um X vermelho na mão, acione as autoridades. Você pode salvar uma vida. Ok, well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Renata Gil. Uh, it's good to hear that uh, the campaign has such a positive results. We hope we can, uh, we still have, uh, we'll be having such results in the future better results even. Uh, I would I would like to, I would have, I have the honor to pass the floor to uh, Madam Cristina Agoritza, who is the, the uh, coordinator of the campaign Words as Sharp as Knives. Welcome. Hello, Excellencies, esteemed delegates and participants, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Athens. Um, it's a great honor for me to be here with you today, and I would really like to thank Brazil, the mission of Brazil and the UN, for today's invitation and for giving me the opportunity to be part of the same panel with Honorable Judge Renata Gil, and also to have the chance to exchange practices and uh, ideas on the significant role of public campaigns on preventing and combating violence against women and girls, especially in this era with the global health crisis of the COVID pandemic. Um, I'm not actually the coordinator of uh, the as sharp as, Words As Sharp As Knife campaign because it's mostly a teamwork, but uh, I will uh, give you a hint, I will present you the, um, uh, our work and especially our work uh, on gender-based violence, on preventing and combating gender-based violence in terms of public, aware public awareness campaigns. Um, this year, on the one hand, it was very fortunate that the CSW was held in a hybrid format, allowing the in-person attendance of national delegations, uh, as mentioned uh, uh, by uh, the head of the Greek um, mission in the UN, um, Madame Theophili. Uh, the Greek delegation this year was headed by the Deputy Minister of Labour and Social Affairs, Mrs. Maria Serengela who actively participated in the general discussion in the ministerial round tables, in bilateral meetings, and also had the chance to meet with um, Madame Sima Bahus, the executive director of UN Women, exchanging views on gender equality and the empowerment of women, of women uh, in terms of challenges and policies. On the other hand, we are in front of a very difficult situation of the Russian aggression against Ukraine here in Europe, in the light of which we're deeply concerned for the safety of civilians, especially women and girls who need our full support. Um, at this point, I would really like to congratulate Brazil and uh, uh, the AMB on the initiative of the BASTA Red Sign campaign, which is groundbreaking. I'm really impressed by uh, your work. Very useful, very practical, very to the point, and uh, a powerful tool as Madame Gilles uh, stated before, and in many cases, life-saving, actually life-saving for women, um, offering at the same time more visibility on gender-based violence incidents in the country. So for what I know, it's a great, a great example to follow or adapt to national circumstances. Violence against women and girls, this systematic and widespread violation of human rights is a threat against all women and an obstacle to any attempt of development, peace, and gender equality in every society. The phenomenon has many forms and dimensions, as we all know. It can happen between people in romantic relationships. It can happen between, in families, at work, between friends, between strangers. It often occurs in private places between people who know each other. Although most societies forbid violence, in reality, violence is often covered up or tolerated. Only in Europe, more than one third of women have been victims of violence at some point in their lives, mainly physical or sexual violence. 
And according to a fairly recent study of the World Health Organization, uh, if I recall, it's a 2017 or 18 study, the cases of violence against women outnumber the 35% of women population worldwide. So we understand uh, the extension of the phenomenon and the problem. All over the world, let's talk about the importance of public campaigns. All over the world, public campaigns have contributed significantly to heightening awareness of violence against women as a violation of human rights that affects society as a whole. Even if violence is still a rampant phenomenon, campaigns will always remain an appropriate tool to effectively address the causes of violence against women, which are rooted deep in social attitudes and practice. They can make violence against women a public issue. They can challenge and influence change in individual and society-wide attitudes. They can serve as a vehicle to inform and educate the um, gender-based violence survivors about their right to receive support. They can build a critical mass for change by bringing together people from different backgrounds who can work together, exchange experiences and create networks. They can finally empower women and men, girls and boys, to become individual agents of change and advocates of gender relations that are free of violence and based on equality. Public campaigns and awareness raising policies in general are, are even more needed amid the COVID-19 health crisis, which is not gender neutral and evidence actually shows a global increase in domestic and gender-based violence, making it a shadow pandemic, as was mentioned in the beginning, in the introduction. Actually, the pandemic, this pandemic has revealed our pre-existing gender inequalities and also contributed to widen the gap between men and women, as women have been on the front line and uh, were hit the hardest. The impact of the pandemic is indeed visible in women's employment, especially the so-called feminized professions, in paid and unpaid work, in domestic care, in working arrangements, in terms of violence against women and domestic violence, in health status, in economic empowerment, in work-life balance arrangements, in leadership and in decision-making, in every aspect of uh, people's activities and women's activities. So before presenting and before referring to uh, our campaign, words are as sharp as knives, allow me to outline a little bit the framework, the general framework around which uh, gender equality, gender-based violence policies evolve, uh, are, uh, evolve in Greece in terms of legislation and in terms of policies. So in Greece, gender equality constitutes a, a distinct aspect of public policy since 1981 with the establishment of the then called General Secretariat for Gender Equality as the competent um, governmental body to plan, implement, and monitor gender equality policies in the country. The constitution enshrines the principle of gender equality, but also recognizes the necessity for the state to take positive measures in favor of women in order to promote substantive gender equality. So in 2018, Greece ratified by national law the Council of Europe's Istanbul Convention on preventing and combating violence against women and domestic violence, which is so far the most far reaching legal instrument to prevent and combat violence against women and domestic violence, both as a violation of human rights as, uh, and as a discrimination, a form of discrimination against women, double aspect violation of human rights and discrimination against women. The law uh, ratifying the Istanbul Convention introduced modifications to the existing legal framework in Greece, in the penal code, in the um, uh, law in the Greek law on domestic violence, and underlines the obligation of the state to fully address all forms of gender-based violence and to take measures to prevent violence against women, protect the victims, and prosecute the perpetrators. The General Secretariat for Demography, Family Policy and Gender Equality, as it is called now, is a designated body competent for monitoring the convention, apart from being the governmental body for gender equality policies in Greece. Uh, 
afterwards in 2019 we had uh, we we have a law on promoting substantive gender equality on preventing and combating gender based violence this is the first standalone legal framework in the country on gender equality and the elimination of discrimination against women it's a horizontal uh, it was a horizontal bill introducing for the first time the notions of gender mainstreaming in Greece legally in a legal text and gender budgeting. Uh, with this law, the network of structures for gender-based violence is institutionalized for the first time and it is given the opportunity for state funding for its operation because as I'm going to mention later, uh, the national program for gender-based violence began in 2010 with EU funding and continues to be co-funded by uh, the EU until 2023. And most recently, the final legislative um, initiative in Greece, uh, we have the new labor law reform. Uh, it was voted in uh, June, if I am correct and includes the ratification of the International Labor Organization Convention on Violence and Harassment in the World of Work. This is the adoption, we're talking about the adoption of this landmark instrument that recognizes the right of everyone to a world of work free of violence and harassment, including gender-based violence and sexual harassment. And in fact, Greece is among the first countries to have ratified the convention um, especially in, uh, in Europe. So in Greece, uh, the General Secretariat for Demography, Family Policy and Gender Equality, uh, in which I, I work, uh, it belongs to the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs and is the governmental body um, competent for gender equality policies and for preventing and combating violence against women. Um, it, the General Secretariat uh, implements its policies through the elaboration of national action plans, uh, taking into consideration the country's needs, the uh, European gender equality strategy, and most recently, the COVID pandemic implications. For example, in the current uh, national action plan for gender equality for the period 2021-2025, uh, the COVID implications were taken into consideration for the elaboration of our policies and initiatives. Uh, Greece um, implements the national program on preventing and combating violence against women since 2010 with the co-funding of the European Union, as I mentioned before. Through the years, uh, this, pro this uh, program on gender-based violence has been incorporated in our national action plans on gender equality. And today we have a network a comprehensive network of structures all over the country for preventing and combating violence against women. And we're talking about 43 structures in Greece. Uh, uh, 60, I'm sorry, uh, 63 structures. Uh, uh, an SOS helpline, 15900, which is nationwide, 24 hour basis, all year long helpline. Which pro that provides immediate assistance in emergency cases. Uh, there are 43 counseling centers throughout the country that provide free of charge social, psychological, legal, and employment support services to women that seek support, as well as 19 shelters that offer free safe accommodation to women victims of violence and their children. And they can also facilitate their access to health services or school enrollment if necessary for the kids. The provision of services at this network of structures is based on the principle of the victim's informed consent the principle of and the principle of confidentiality, as you understand. In fact, the target group of all services provided by our network has been expanded to include, apart from women victims of gender-based violence, women victims of multiple discrimination. We're talking about migrants, refugees, Roma women, um, women with disabilities, etc. Let me provide some numbers, indicative numbers. Since the beginning of the program on gender-based violence in 2010-2011, uh, until October 2021, 
approximately 40,000 of women have been supported by the counseling centers and the shelters in Greece. More than 55,000 women have consulted the SOS headline in all these years. And uh, in uh, the previous year, 2021, which was a COVID year, uh, the helpline, the SOS helpline received almost 4,000 phone calls, which were more than other years before, from women victims of violence. Um, and the shelters also hosted 175 women with their children for accommodation. The data also show that during the COVID period, we're talking about the years 2020, 2021, the relationship between the survivor and the perpetrator was mostly spousal. And there was also, also an increase in the reports of gender-based violence incidents. Uh, during the pandemic, um, we tried to adapt uh, our services for uh, women in need to the extreme circumstances. Uh, for example, in the first period of the pandemic where we have had the quarantine and the restrictions, movement restrictions, um, our primary concern was the protection of health for both the staff and the women supported, but also it was to ensure the accessibility of women survivors to our network of structures. And in fact, the helpline was a great, played a, a very uh, important role in this effort. Uh, there were initiatives, um, there was a very close collaboration with the Hellenic Police and its departments for gender-based violence, a close collaboration with NGOs and professionals of the field that deal uh, and with uh, gender-based violence and support women. Uh, there were uh, newsletter reports published by the General Secretariat depicting uh, exactly the overall response of the national of the network of structures during the COVID period. Uh, we had two, we published two annual reports on gender-based violence for 2020-2021. Um, the staff and the beneficiaries of all our, of our structures were offered free COVID tests. And there was also translation of all informational leaflets in the main languages of women refugees regarding the restrictive measures of COVID. Uh, and what is important to mention is that for the first time, uh, a governmental specialized e-platform, uh, Me Too Greece, following the, the global movement of Me Too, was also created uh, and it's constantly being updated, I must say, with information and supportive material on violence, sexual harassment, and abuse. Uh, naturally, apart from the network of structures uh, for the support of women victims, our program on preventing and combating violence against women includes several initiatives and nationwide, uh, nationwide awareness raising campaigns that have always played a key role in the whole process. Uh, since the launch of the program in 2010, um, our basic campaigns were designed and implemented with the slogan, you're not the only one, you're not alone. Uh, there was plenty of informational material, TV and radio spots back then. And um, in the beginning of the COVID pandemic, uh, when we were still sailing in uncharted waters, basically, we tried to raise the public awareness about the possibility of increasing the incidence of domestic violence due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, there was a video spot published as part of uh, a governmental campaign titled, We Stay at Home, But We Don't Stay Silent. And this year, the, la in the past year, in 2021, uh, all these previous campaigns were complemented by the uh, words as sharp as knives campaign. Uh, in the light, also in the light of the rising number of femicides in Greece, the notion, the term femicide is not uh, legally um, present in the legal system in Greece uh, right now, uh, but there were 12 femicides in 2020 in Greece and 17 in 2021, which is a large number. And in the light of all this, and, and uh, complementarily to the previous uh, awareness raising campaigns, uh, we had, and amid the COVID crisis, of course, we have the uh, Words as Sharp as Knives campaign. 
it was addressed to women victims of violence as well as to their relatives, their per the perpetrators and their wider environment. Uh, reminding everyone that some words can become as sharp as knives. And this is currently the central public campaign uh, for gender-based violence in Greece. It runs in the social media. Um, the messaging in the campaign focuses on words women hear from their partners, their family, their friends, when, which keep them trapped in toxic and abusive environments. For example, these words like, I'm sorry, baby, I didn't mean to, I love you, please forgive me, I can change, all these words can escalate to knife stabs. Uh, women should be able to recognize the abuse, never justify it, and uh, because these words do not actually show any remorse. So to seek support, women are encouraged through the campaign to contact the Greek National Network of Structures uh, for preventing and combating gender-based violence. That is the, the SOS helpline and the 43 counseling centers. Uh, what I must say is that every time the campaign, a campaign uh, on gender-based violence is on in Greece, there is uh, immediately uh, an increase, a sharp increase in the incidents reported and the visibility of the, the phenomenon, which is very important. And data show this. Coming to an end because I, I don't want to tell you anymore. Um, the Istanbul Convention itself underlines, which we uh, have ratified, no. it underlines the obligation of all member states to conduct on a regular basis and at all levels awareness raising campaigns or programs and ensure dissemination of information among the general public on measures available to prevent acts of violence against women and domestic violence. Uh, distinguished uh, panelists, uh, ladies and gentlemen, public campaigns and raising awareness of the different forms of violence against women and domestic violence organized by policymakers is a very important element in the prevention of violence against women because heightened awareness is a first and basic step in changing attitudes and behavior that perpetuate or even condone the phenomenon of gender-based violence. Thank you so much, and I'm, I'm at your disposal. Thank you very much, Christina. Very interesting uh, campaign, very nice uh, presentation. Uh, we had some, had some uh, questions here, but we have some time constraints, and uh, I would like to uh, uh, give the floor to the our uh, uh, represent, uh, permanent representative, Mr. Ronaldo Costa, who will say some final words. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Justice Renata Gil. Uh, Christina, thank you also very much for the very profound uh, presentations. I think it uh, reveals first the passion with which you both uh, face this, this, this uh, very, very grave and serious issue uh, and the enormous amount of work that still has to be done so that we can effectively combat uh, violence against women and girls. Um, unfortunately, time has run short. Uh, I think we would have, a, have had a very, very productive exchange of views with, with the many participants uh, whom I thank for having been with us here today. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to organize something else uh, in the future to, to uh, deepen uh, our consideration and analysis of this. So thank you very much. I turn to Ambassador Teofli for her final considerations as well. Thank you very much for, for this joint uh, initiative. I think that when we join forces, uh, we are stronger. And, uh, and when we uh, really, we are two countries, different continents, and we have uh, the same approach. Uh, so uh, uh, we can uh, work further uh, together, uh, closer. Uh, and uh, uh, because uh, both campaigns uh, are uh, very popular, and they gain uh, ground. Uh, and I think that, uh, um, that this is a very good base uh, to, to continue our battle. Um, and uh, uh, yes, uh, I think that we have to uh, 
take the messages uh, of both uh, of both campaigns very seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. With this, I thank all the participants to this event for this fruitful uh, discussion on the theme of utmost importance to us all. Thank you very much. The event is closed. Thank you. Thank you.